Hello everyone. Nature does not produce perfectly straight predictable lines, but milling machines do. For this reason, redefining the secondary anatomy with the fine diamonds is always a requirement to produce a high in full contour zirconia. And once you do that, you will see the tooth come to life before your eyes. In this video, we will see how we can make the difference between full contour zirconia crowns more apparent to doctors and patients. Our zirconia use for this case is the IPS Zercat Prime. IPS Prime is a multi-layer zirconia material with exceptional quality and aesthetic. Combines strength and aesthetic for all indications from single unit to 14 unit stretch. And later, I will have a dedicated video to talk about the zirconia generations. And IPS Prime will be my main topic. And I will explain why this disc is really a revolutionary material. But in this video today, I will focus on the post-processing lab work. So here we go. After centering the zirconia crowns and sealing those crowns on the working model and fixing the contact points, first step to do and before we jump to the processing, I would bring a diamond pair similar to the one you see here and go over the buckle surface without applying any pressure on a high speed. Diamond pair, fine porous diamond pair, red code in most of the rotary companies. And what's the advantage of this step? The advantage is getting back the right shade of the zirconia after centering. Because Zirconia tends to generate a mirror-like reflective surface after being centered. Uh, this property delivers a wrong color on the surface. Therefore, removing this shallow coat uh, would allow for the original shade of the zirconia to show up again. So if we do this step properly, as you see here, done already on both sides of the case, we'll be able to see first the correct shade of the the chosen zirconia uh, color uh, initially and also see the Dunton and Sizal gradation clearly. Of course, in case we're using multi-layer zirconia like the prime here. And uh, our crowns here uh, uh, has the color of bleach too. And uh, especially from this angle of view and without even the need to direct the light source in any certain angle, you still see this nice gradation from Dunton to incisor. The second step is of course making a final check on the shape itself and service cur curvatures before even we move to the micro and macro texture. Why we, uh, we check the shape to make sure whether we've got the exact same what we've designed, what we've pictured in the, in the design uh, making the necessary correction and restoring the curvature of every crown. Uh, for that, I would use a diamond rubber like the one you see here, the green rubber. Uh, and it's essential to bear in mind that curving the incisal third inward lingually supports showing more gradation in translucency from Dunton to incisor, and therefore enables translucency to be more apparent at the incisal third. Then we move ahead to the third step of accentuating the transition line angles and controlling the symmetry aspects of morphology between the two sides of the teeth arrangement we have. With the help of either a regular pencil or uh, a pen or a direct light source uh, hitting the buccal surface of, of, of our teeth or of, of our case, as you see here, uh, then we start carving the micro texture, uh, which, is a, which is a very necessary uh, process to restoring all the three dimensional features that natural teeth have. For that, and on a very slow, happy speed, I would use an eroded green stone burrs uh, like this you see here, with the fine used tips uh, we can uh, carve a, the pattern of texture we're intending to have uh, through the uh, entire case. Then I start with the vertical micro texture. 
using uh, these diamond pairs. I like about the one uh, which looks like American football the fact that it doesn't leave aggressive grooves with the shape of the bear head itself. Rather, it opens the groove gradually to the shape of, of its tip. Uh, but uh, anyway, if, if it's not easy for you to uh, like to use a direct light to, so, to see all these details, you still can track the intensity of your texture by using some auxiliary methods of uh, texture identification, such as like silver powder or golden powder or even articulating paper by uh, passing over the buckle surface of your crowns. Uh, and in this sense, you'll be able to observe the difference between zones of high reflection of light, like prominent areas such as uh, line angles and high of contour, and zones of shadows like areas located in, in depressions and less detailed spots such uh, as grooves and uh, proximal uh, aspects. Then I switched to the horizontal uh, micro texture using these uh, diamond pairs. Uh, the horizontal micro texture, what's uh, so called uh, perakimata. Uh, but remember a golden rule. Remember that the most important rule for creating a natural texture is that the vertical grooves must be parallel to the long axis of every tooth, while horizontal grooves must be perpendicular on the vertical uh, grooves. Uh, then later I use a small diamond rubber, a thin diamond rubber, as you see here. Uh, a diamond rubber wheel to soften any possible sharp angles uh, left or created from the, the drilling on the surface of those uh, crowns. And also fine tune any over texturized areas before I go ahead and sandblast the crowns with 50 microns aluminum oxide at 1.5 bar pressure in order to make sure that I remove any surface tension left there from either the rubber wheel used or any uh, contamination left from the uh, uh, diamond bears I uh, also used. One important thing I need to show you in this uh, picture, I intend not to make much texture on the inside of the earth. It's very important because the more texture you create, the more light reflected you would turn the surface to be. Take a closer look at the two halves of this case. The picture was lit from behind. I wanted to take this picture before I continue texturizing the other side in order to show you that the more texture you put on the surface, the more you increase the light reflection of that surface and consequently reduce the translucency. So you see on your left side, the side which already been texturized and you see it, the translucency is, is less than the right side, which hasn't been texturized yet. Therefore, keep texture light, and especially on the inside of the third, where the high degree of translucency is important to make a monolithic crown close to natural look as much as possible. Then I do check the shade for the last time before I move to the staining step. But as you see here, it's very difficult to observe any shade match when the two samples you're comparing have a different surface light behavior. So what we have here, shiny shade guide and matte crowns. Therefore, what I do and what I did here, I sandblasted my shade guide and moistened, moistened both the shade guide and the crowns equally with a glaze effect then I can clearly see the accurate shade match in all color dimensions because they both now have the same uh, surface light properties. See here the beautiful and very accurate shade match of the Prime Bleach 2. That indicates that no stains are needed to correct the shade. I could easily gla glaze those crowns and finish the case. However, here to create further useful opalescent and bumalone structure, I chose to proceed with further characterization. 
Then it's time to start staining uh, the case. And you're all familiar with the Ivo color shading and staining uh, system. I wouldn't touch the shade Dunton because as you've seen from the previous slide, the, the matching in shade chroma and value is fascinating when it comes to uh, a prime. Uh, however, I would still use the three uh, incisal shade, shade incisal one, two, three to create uh, like further aesthetic. Usually I would start with shade incisal two for every case to create a polychromatic multi-layer effect to create the type of translucency that we would usually see on the shade guide, on the shade tab. However, here and since we have a multi-layer zirconia, so the translucency there is real translucency. So no need for using shade incisal 2. I would skip it for this case, but I would go directly to shade incisal 3, where the bluish can give us the opalescent illusion, one of like the most real opalescent illusion I've ever experienced in, in staining material, especially when it's used on bleach colors. Therefore, I use it always for shading the incisal, uh, mesial, and distal corners. And I won't hesitate to even like drag my brush uh, down toward the body of uh, the, the uh, crown to leave like a fade out uh, sort of transition between the white zirconia surface and the bluish shade uh, inside the tree. Uh, then with uh, shade uh, uh, with shade incisal uh, one, then with shade incisal one, and with the tip of my staining brush, I would leave an interrupted small line, uh, could be horizontal, like in this shape, I would create it. Okay, uh, right below the incisal edge, then uh, bake these three shades on low temperature, like 700, just to have them fixed uh, in place. Then the mamalon and the halo effect uh, uh, step, the halo effect. We could create the illusion of the mamalon structure by just using any of the reflective bright stains we have uh, in our essence shade kit. But we also could give it a little more true, lifelike, like three-dimensional look by mixing it with probably 10% of any of the layering powder we have, such as uh, Opal Effect 4 here, which is what I did since uh, the crown's color is bleach. Therefore, uh, Opal Effect 4 with white essence mixed together with Zerliner liquid was one of the best selection for bleach shades. Why Zerliner liquid? Zerliner liquid is to have better consistency versus mixing it with buildup liquid. With Zerliner liquid, Zerliner liquid enables us to pick up hair thick amount of stain mixture, as well as having those lines sticking in place where you lay them on the surface without slumping down and they will stay still. I wanted also to tackle the masking of the prime. Amazing is the masking capability of the uh, prime zirconia in the cervical third. Uh, as you see here, obviously in this case, more of our stump colors were dark and still the match to bleach two shade tab is uh, like very, very accurate. Now comes the final step, the glaze step, to cover the entire surface and fill part of the micro voice created among the Mamolon 3D structure. And of course, we would use glaze flow, glaze fluorescent on monolithic zirconia at all time. Uh, then I would bake this on the like a standard Ivoclar glaze program. Then I would do again with another coat of the same glaze flow. I would uh, have another coat of glaze, but thinner. And, or like with another word, like I would add more glaze liquid to it. But I would make sure that my, my textures 
are not completely filled with blades. That's very important. How, how would I control that? I would use the furnace head. I would open the furnace head and uh, use the, uh, the, the heat uh, to stabilize the glaze fluidity. And that's, uh, with that, I would uh, uh, like uh, end up with this results, the ones you see now. And, and that's our case for today and video for this time. Uh, remember, nature does not produce perfectly straight predictable lines. Malik machine do. And for this reason, defining the secondary anatomy and characterizing color details is always a requirement to produce a high in full contour zirconia. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you found some interesting practical uh, points for your daily lab work. Looking forward to the next topic and uh, next video. Thank you.